God gets people that everybody else would have walked away from and he says, I am going to choose you and use you in a unique way. That's why we mess up when we start trying to choose who we think God ought to use because we have a way of picking people that we like and prefer but God has a way of picking people that everybody else would have never thought eligible to be used by God. David is one of those people. When Samuel comes to the house of Jesse looking for a king, David is the last guy on the list. Everybody in Jesse's house looked more like a king than David did. But David was the man that God had selected. David had come from a dark background, a dark past, ostracized by his father, ostracized and rejected by his brother. He was merely an errand boy, a, a go-fetch-it boy. He was not somebody that Jesse preferred or tried to promote. But you have to understand that many times God will select a man or woman that nobody else wanted to promote. And yet God said, I have found me a man after my heart. When God has chosen you, you don't have to promote yourself. You don't have to try to make a name for yourself. You don't have to try to build a platform for yourself. You don't have to drop your cards or drop your name or try to move in the right cliques or the right people. When God has chosen you, you can be on the backside of the desert living a life of mediocrity and God will snatch you out and put you in a place for his purpose. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Out of the dark, forsaken ashes of David's dysfunctional background, God shined a light on him and said, I have chosen you. I wonder if there's anybody in this room who senses that God has chosen you. I trust then, if you have your hand up, you are not intimidated by anybody not jealous of anyone, not envious of anybody else, not fighting for your position or for your turf, because if God has chosen you, nobody can duplicate you, nobody can replace you, you have a place of uniqueness all by yourself. The Bible says that God has chosen you in the furnace of affliction. A furnace is a dark place filled with corrosion and, and all of the residue of the fire and the ashes and things that have been burned. And yet God says, I have chosen you out of the furnace of affliction. I want you to understand that if you've been chosen tonight, it is the things that went against you that actually work for you. If the enemy would have understood this, according to the book of Romans, he would have never crucified the Lord. There is a principle in the kingdom, the worse things go against you, the more God proves himself in your life. In fact, in the book of Exodus, it says the, Lord, the more they afflicted them, the more they grew. It is really the afflictions of life that causes you to really shine forth the glory of God. It is really when people forsake you that God establishes his favor on your life and you'll never know you're chosen by God until you're rejected by men and when all men forsake you and you still get there anyway, then you can say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I would have been swallowed up. The Lord is my light. Shout it. The Lord is my light. Oh, that means that's all I need to go into the dark place and come out with what I need is just to know that the Lord is my light, my resource, my illuminating force, my brilliancy my glory, the lifter up of my head, the establisher of my peace, my fortress, my bulwark, my strength, my defense, my enlightenment, my drive, my passion, my intensity, my force, and my covering. The Lord is my light. That means you don't have to spend time asking God for other things. Uh -oh. 
Because the truth of the matter is, the things you are asking God to give you have already been given to you. <laughs> it's already yours. The, the healing you're seeking, the, the financial breakthrough you're seeking, the, the favor you're seeking, it's, it's already given you. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath in store for them that love him. But it have been revealed unto us by his spirit. Now when you reveal something, let me, let me show you this. If we cut out all the lights in the room and, it, and everybody's quiet, it would appear that no one was here. When we turn the lights on, the lights don't make the people come. It just shines the light on what's already there. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The thing that you are asking God to do is already done. You just need him to shine the light on what's already done so that you can reach in and get what he has for you. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, tell Telestai, it is finished. And the Bible said he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That means that every time you ask him for something, he doesn't have to get up and start working again. He's entered to a rest because everything you need to present you before him has already been allocated. You just need him to turn the light on it. Somebody shout, the Lord is my light. Every time you get in a situation, you just need God to turn the light on it.